tell me what it's like. You're live. Okay. I am Emily Taylor. I am live in my studio. Um, today I'm going to do a brief demonstration demonstration uh, just because I know you like it and it's fun and easy to it's it's fun and easy for me to do and it, and I uh, love to have you watch me and learn from me. So as I'm working, will you please feel free to ask questions in the chat and what I'm going to be working on. So I'm kind of looking at my camera where I can see me and I've got a webcam set up that will be shifting in a minute. But um, I'm going to be making this heart right here because it's the week of Valentine's, of course. So I figured this would be a quick, easy thing to go through. Um, I hope you're all well. I hope you enjoyed the Super Bowl. Had a great weekend. I had a wonderful weekend. My son uh, swam in the region, uh, high school region championships and set a record with his relay team. So that was super exciting. That was a big win. Hurrah for us. Um, so anyway, let me just tell you what I'm, what I'm, uh, what I've got set up here. I'm going to shift the camera now and let's make sure, Amelia, you watch this, make sure that looks good. Oh yeah. Right there. Let's just flip it. So it's not upside down though. Okay. So I will work upside down and there, that will work great. Right, right. Okay. So before I get started, let me just point out a few things. Um, the This is from the Love Always pattern, and it was the pattern that I showed you just a minute ago. And I'll show it to you again right here. So this is the finished Love Always pattern that I'm going to be working on. I'm going to work on that part. And... Um, I am using fabric from my red fabric bundle. So you can see this is this is my red, my current red fabric bundle. And we try to put, so we put 18 pieces of fabric in each color bundle. And I have pieces of, uh, from the pink fabric bundle as well. So this is what the fabric bundles look like. There's um, 18 pieces of fabric from light to dark and uh, warm to cool, and they are eighth of a yard cuts. So eighth of a yard by, um, eighth of a yard is four and a half inches by the width of fabric. So what I've done is I've already traced the template onto some parchment paper. Parchment paper is non-stick, heat resistant, and I have learned that I kind of like to, so the surface that I'm working on is just a piece of foam core with felt on it. And I'm going to pin the parchment paper so that it's uh, so that it doesn't shift around. And then I like to have my gray tone template nearby so that I can refer to it. It's out of the screen for you guys, but it's actually just right here. Um, but you can see that what I've done, what I'm going to do is I've got my darks, and then I'm going to go into a lighter area, and then even lighter, and then the highlights. So an easy way to approach this is to create value sets. So if I count how many values there are, there are one, two, three, which is the same as these, three, four. So four value sets, super easy. So the value sets that I have created, now look, it's not even very much fabric. I might, I think I've got enough though right here. So this is the dark, this is, kind of transitioning into so these fabrics are kind of transitioning into the mid, you know, the middle. Um, so, and here's the thing, like you can see that this one is probably clearly darker than what's here, but I, and, and so this might be kind of a transition piece between these two value sets, but for now I'm just going to assign it to this value set and just kind of remember that it's a little bit darker. So, I'm, I just need to be aware of that. And then um, I've got some pinks here. And I think I might need to get some more pinks. Um, let's see. And then we've got our highlights. And we don't, I don't need very many pieces for highlights, but I think those will work. And this one is a lot lighter. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull that one out. 
and I'm going to think about fussy cutting with, um, well, not really fussy cutting. I'm using this that I have fussy cut previously. So those are, those are the pieces that I'm going to use kind of for the midtone and, or the, the transition between the, the main red color and as we transition towards the highlight. So this might be sufficient, Amelia, if you'll just set that right there, then I can grab it if I need to, that'd be great. Okay, so those are my those are my value sets. All right, so you can see I've got my darks, my midtones, and I might even just hide that one there. Darks, midtones, and then shifting into the highlight, we've got the transition colors going into the highlights. So I'm going to set these aside now so that I can get started, and I'm just going to begin by working in these two colors. Um, so the other things that I have set up right here, I've got my, I've got my iron and it's on and I have my iron uh, rest. I've got my six inch scissors and I have my tweezers. So this is how I always get started with the, the elements that I need. Um, and now we can just whip this thing up. So let's get going. So a lot of times people will ask me, how do I deal with um, the edge? And it's really so much more simple than you might think. Um, I Number one, I don't worry a whole bunch about, I mean, I stick pretty close to the lines, but I'm not going to stress out if I overlap just a little bit, if I don't stay in the lines. And these first few pieces that I lay down, they're going to have a hard time sticking to the surface because it is a non-stick heat resistant uh, surface. That's why we use parchment paper. And I might want to like, look at that, that's starting to round. So I think I might just kind of round that piece out and make it fit. And that's how I make pieces fit. Now, the other thing I forgot to pull over is my trash can because I'm going to create a lot of trash right here. Peeling these things off. So again, see that's not going to stick very well. So my I'm going to just press it just where it, it can stick to the parchment paper. I'm not worried about it sticking to this quite yet because if there are any changes that I want to make, um, I can still make changes um, as long as the pieces are not stuck to each other. Now look how much I'm overlapping into the that other value set and that's okay because the pieces from this area will cover cover that up and it's really just a guideline too. So in fact if I want to start incorporating some of these other cult this next value set, I can start doing that too. And the, the more distinct your value sets are, you know, really using the dark value set and the, the bright mid-tone value set, the more juicy this is going to look. It's going to make it look really yummy. Now this is that piece that we decided is a good transition piece. And I think I'll use it down here just a little bit. You can see how I use a pin to score that paper and pull it off. And let's just keep going, get some of these. How am I gonna handle that? Well, I'm just gonna going to kind of, no, nope, that was the wrong way. Let's see if I, I can just start like that. There we go. So sometimes I, I just kind of twist it and, and audition the shape and then cut it to close to what I think will work. So I think that's pretty close. So again, as you have questions, don't hesitate to type them in the chat. 
Amelia is monitoring the chat. And one thing too, with making this, uh, this heart, I, the fabric that I selected is more, um, it's more pure color. They're less of the muddy reds. It didn't, I pulled out some of the dirty reds. Like this is kind of a dirty red and I don't know if I love it. So, and this too, I mean, it's definitely dark. It's right. It's in the right value, but compared to this and this, like this one is a very pure, more pinky. And I don't know if you can see it exactly through the the webcam, but this is a very muddy, it's just a muddier, darker color. They're the same value, but I like that one better because it's a heart. I want it to be pure and pretty. I need to say hi to Janelle. Oh. And thank you so much for your sweet card. <laughs> Janelle, thank you. That was the sweetest thing to get that Valentine's Day card from you. We really appreciate your sweetness. Yeah. And when Amelia opened it up, she said, oh, I love Janelle. I love her so much. <laughs> so that was very thoughtful of you. Thank you very much. Janelle is a, a friend that lives in Idaho, and she has come to, well, we became friends when she came to our retreat. She's come to two of our retreats now. So she's just a, it's just been really fun for us to get to know some of our customers a little better. And Janelle is one of them and her cute husband, Scott. Yeah, there are a few of our customers that we feel really, really tender towards because they've been with us for a long time and come to our retreats. Um, so, Now, one thing you'll notice um, is I'm continuing to do kind of these darker colors over here and, um, and then transitioning. So I, I've kind of, as I've been working uh, as a collage artist, trying to always improve, I've realized that something that's helpful for me to think about is a transition. We always need a transition. And um, this is not a good transition, but I'm going to leave that there for just a minute so that I can demonstrate uh, how easy it is to make changes and also let you see what it will look like when I make that change. Any questions so far about what I'm doing? It's kind of like watching a watching a fire. I've decided watching somebody work like this because it's a little bit mesmerizing to watch somebody put something together before your very eyes, isn't it? <laughs> Like I should turn on some music in my studio. I off we do like to listen to music in the studio while we're working. Let's see here. Let's kind of again moving towards the lighter pieces. Now, this little area right here is this, and I don't want to lose that. Um, so I just need to kind of remember, that's why I like to have my gray tone. This is just, it's actually a reflected, 
highlight from below. So this kind of represents a very, uh, oh, traditional, retro, juicy heart. And those juicy retro hearts really uh, have a lot of highlight and shadow and depth. And so that's, that's what I am trying to create here. So while I'm working, I think I'll just share a few things that we've been working on in the studio. Um, we have, I've been cleaning things up. We're going to do a big, we're going to do a big cleanup today. And part of cleaning up involves cleaning out my stash. So we've had a few, we, we've had some um, grab bags available online and we're just about sold out of those, but those are kind of a fun, a fun, a nice way for me to clean out my, about uh, clean out my studio. If you're going to, if we're going to clean out more of your fabric today, I'm, I think we can have more grab bags. There. Yeah. I just, I want to get everything really super tidy because I finally, we have finished the block of the month quilt and it is on the way to the quilter and I'm super excited about the way it's turned out. We did make some last minute changes to the quilt. Well, not last minute, but as we were putting it together and I always reserve the right to make changes as I'm going. Um, that's part of the reason we haven't shared the entire thing with you because we changed some of the, we changed our plan a little bit and we reduced it from 10 blocks to eight blocks collage blocks that is and uh, our fabric is on its way so we're going to be launching that block of the month program very soon and many of you will be happy to know that it's a little more affordable because we have fewer blocks um, and with the block of the month I think I've mentioned this but we're going to create it will be basically getting a complete kit in the mail every month so it will have all the collage fabric as well as the background fabric. And I'll be doing a lot of this, a lot of live video demo uh, when, when we've got the block of the month going. Alrighty, let's see. I think we're just about done with this luscious, deep, dark, these dark colors. Do you want a question? Yeah, sure. Have you ever cut out lots of small pieces first and then arranged them? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I have not, although that sounds like it might be a good challenge to do it that way. I prefer to just kind of cut as I go. Although look at all these little pieces. Like I could definitely <laughs> probably find something in here to, let's see. Okay, there's my last. Here's my last piece. What type of scissors do you use? So my favorite scissors are these Karen K. Buckley six inch perfect scissors. And the reason these are my favorite is for a couple reasons. They have, a, they're the perfect size for this type of collage. Okay, now these are all little scraps that I'm going to clean up and throw away. Cause I'm done with that colorway. Anyway, so these scissors are my favorite because they are the perfect size for cutting the, the shapes, the sizes that I'm doing. Um, and they are, I guess what, I guess what you call them is universal. So you could use them if you're ambidextrous. Yeah. You could use them left or right handed, but the main thing is they have a really nice, fine serrated edge. And so they cut through fabric really well. So those are why I like my... Karen K. Buckley scissors. Now, even if you don't use Karen K. Buckley, there are other great scissors. Um, for example, Kai makes some really good scissors as well. And I have some Kai, but I have an eight inch 
And I just find that the six inches is better. It's my preference. Okay, so now I can really just kind of set aside my darker fabrics because I'm done using those. And I might leave that one, I don't know. And now I'm gonna start filling things in. In fact, I might just start right in the middle with something glorious and lovely like this piece right here. And sometimes I do tend to jump around once I've established, I've established the outline here and I've established the darkest value out there. So you can see these are all scraps. They all have come out of my scrap bin and they just vary in shape and size. So it really doesn't matter what shape I'm cutting. Like that's just a really weird shape, right? Um, if you care about your shape, you can be more conscientious. But my general shape is a fast, easy cut, which is generally a one, a triangle that's rounded or, and, and it changes, the shape changes based on, um, what the what the piece of fabric looks like that I'm using. So this does have some frayed edges. I am gonna trim some of those off. Are there any other questions, Amelia, that I can answer while I'm while I'm working on this? Not right now. Okay. Sounds good. Well, I'm just gonna keep cutting away. One thing I want to point out too, you can kind of see that the, whoops, my glue didn't stick to that very well. So I'm going to take my iron, press that again, and try again. Sometimes your steam seam might be a little finicky, but I find that after you heat it up again, it behaves a little bit better. Does using the pin cause frays in the fabric? Great question. On occasion, uh, the pin will, when I when I score it like this, it might pull off some some threads, and if that happens, I just clip them, clip them off. Now let's see here. Should we introduce the new kitty? I can't remember if I introduced the no, kitty I don't before. Think we have. Come here, baby. Come here, Murph. We have a new kitten. Oh, there's a girl. Okay, let's show her. <laughs> Come here, you. Oh, she's so cute. Let's take a look at this cute <laughs> kitten. <laughs> Isn't she cute? Oh, she's like, put me you're down. You're crazy. Put me down. Oh, you're so cute. Mm -hmm. Put me down. There you go. <laughs> Come here, little woman. Okay, let's get back to this. Mm. You're precious. Okay, there. So Murph is her name. She is named after my, it, she's my son's kitten. And uh, she is named after a character on my son's favorite movie, Interstellar. Murph is the no, let's, is the daughter. Let's get down. <laughs> Holy precious. Yeah, she's a cute little lovey. And it's been fun because we've just kind of kept her up in the studio while my while my son's at school. Okay, I'm going to now start to pull in, let's pull in a few lighter. Well, this is definitely a pink, but it's a dark pink. So I'm gonna use. I probably missed it, but did you iron all these scraps onto a two-sided stick product first? Oh, good question. So the product that I have used this is, it's called a double-sided fusible web, 
And yes, I've prepared all of my fabric with a double-sided fusible web. And the, the one that I recommend in my patterns and what I use all the time is called Steam -a Seam. And particularly Light Steam -a Seam 2 is the one that I prefer. Um, we do sell this on our website. So if that is something you need, Amelia, do you want to grab a package of it and we'll just show what it looks like? See how much lighter that is from the from what's right there? So I'm going to actually move this down here because this is going to be a step lighter than this as we move it into the highlight. Um, one reason for keeping my pieces the size that they are is that um, rather than going bigger, obviously I could go bigger, but one reason to keep them this size is that I can get a wider variety of fabric in this collage if I keep things a little, excuse me, a little smaller. And this is, uh, that's kind of the key with collage to put as many different fabrics in it as possible. It, I think it just makes it look gonna... so much more interesting. <laughs> she just came up below. <laughs> you can kind of see her right there. You little stinker. She's fine, maybe. I just don't yeah. want her to accidentally end the stream. Yeah, I don't want her to end the stream, and She's... I don't want her to step on the iron. She just wants to sit there. Okay, so here's the Light Steam Seam 2. This is the product that I like to use, and this is the product that all my fabric has been prepared with beforehand. Um, in fact, here is, this is about the size of piece that I like to cut even, sometimes even smaller, like this is a small little project. So this is about the size that I like to prepare with steam -a seam. So I'll show you real quick how I do that. Amelia, will you hand me that? Oh, we don't want to open that package, do we? Let's see. So anyway, I prepare it. That's about the size that I like. In fact, you know what? Maybe we can use some of this in here. Let's see if there's anything else in the pinks. Oh, here's a piece that's all ready. And this is rather large. I'm gonna cut that. I don't like to have gigantic pieces to work with because I don't have a lot of space here. Okay, let's just keep going. Now this might be a real good, This is these are my transition pieces into my highlights. That looks kind of crazy, right? But watch how well that's going to turn out. So remember, this is the transition, the transition space. Do you use a really tight quilting pattern to catch all of the small pieces? Yes. So when I go to quilt something like this, I am using dense quilting. Um, for this particular project, I actually didn't quilt it because it's just a simple little wall hanging. Let me show it again. Um, so this one has not been quilted. So this is just all pressed down. Um, and then I did some embroidery and I I finished it with a facing and you can actually see I used a stabilizer on the back because I did some embroidery. So this one has not been quilted, but if you are planning to use it in something other than a wall hanging, I would recommend dense quilting. So if you're going to use, if you're going to create something that's going to be used either in a quilt or in a pillow, um, yes, dense quilting. And when I say dense, I mean no more than a half inch between stitch lines. And actually I like it more like a quarter inch between stitch lines, especially when I'm quilting on the collage part of a quilt. Uh, that way I can ensure that everything has been tacked down with the quilting. Was that a tearaway stabilizer? Um, no, this is, this is not, a t so the question, about this stabilizer. This is a fusible stabilizer, so it's a fusible on one side. So it actually, I've pressed it to the reverse side of this fabric. Um, 
So it's not a tearaway stabilizer. Uh, I just, it's a, it's a fusible. It's meant to stay there permanently, which is fine because it's, again, it's a, it's a wall hanging. It's not going to be used in a quilt. Okay, so we're kind of working on this little, this little transition area here. Off topic, but what is the finished size of your Mayday quilt hanging in the studio? Um, my Mayday is big. I don't it's know. It's big. We've resized it I've, since. I've resized it because it was ginormous. And I also changed it from a, I also changed it from a parchment pressing. It, it began as a parchment pressing pattern, but, um, we felt like people weren't using it as a parchment pressing pad. They were, they weren't creating their own composition. They were just using my composition. So I thought, well, I'll just make it easy on them and do a foundation panel. Um, but the size, oh, it's probably 60 inches. It's huge. It's big. So I, I don't know off the top of my head. I think it's better as a foundation panel. That's why I changed it. Any other questions? That's where our highlight is going. But I do think we gotta be careful and do some little transition right there. So I'm gonna teach color theory on YouTube? Ah, so on these free videos, I don't go in, I don't go much into color theory, but I do have a lot to say about color theory. Um, so when I provide a workshop, I will keep, I, I teach my version of color theory. It's color theory according to Emily, and it's about an hour long lecture. Um, I do offer webinars. So in that webinar, it's a live webinar. Our next one is February. What is it? Another it's February on leap 20, day. February 29th. Mm -hmm. Okay. So on February 29th, we have a live webinar. It's $109. It's a two and a half hour class. And we have a limited number of people that can sign up, but there are a few seats left in there. Uh, but I will go into color theory um, and how to apply color theory to fabric selection. And then we also talk about design and what makes a pleasing design. What are the elements of pleasing design? So I invite you, if you want to learn a little bit more about how I select fabric, um, join me there. That's a good one. I also talk about color theory in my book. So I have a book called Collage Quilter, Essentials for Success with Collage Quilts. And you can find a lot of great information in my book. So I highly recommend that too, if you want to learn more about color theory. I will give you one little tidbit, one interesting tidbit, since I'm working with these colors right now. This is kind of interesting. So um, these two colors right here, are probably real close to the same value, but they have a distinct difference, right? Um, and that's a, dis a, di a difference that I talk about in color theory. And I talk about why you want to incorporate those types of differences in color, in making your collage. Okay, dokey, let's just keep going here. Any other questions while I'm working? Any other sneak peeks of the block of the month? Um, well, no, because it's on the way to the quilter. But the next time we show it, it'll be finished, I think. Yeah, we could show a sneak peek of one of the fabrics. Like what? What do you want me to grab? Um, why don't you grab your favorite, Amelia? Show us what your favorite fabric is in the collection. 
So Amelia and I designed the fabric that goes with the block of the month. I'll just grab this one because this is a beautiful one. And I'll let me want to get this placed down and then we'll show that one. I think that's that's a pretty good highlight. Oh, this is actually a fun Looking teaser good, yeah. for the fabric collection. Okay, let's hear it. If you've purchased one of the grab bags recently oh, over the past yeah. couple days, uh -huh. you might have some some samples of that fabric in it. That's right. Lots of the grab bags have scraps of our fabric of our new collection. fabric collection. That's right. Good point. So should I show them one of the fabric pieces? Okay. This is one of the fabrics that is called Peony. This is part of the Longwood collection. And um, so this is a good, this is a good hint. And you can see this is also great fussy cutting fabric that we've, you can actually see we've used it as fussy cutting fabric. And it's prepared with steam machine because we've used a lot of that in our, in our quilt. So there's the hint for the week. Hope you like that hint. Dang it, that's that again. Stuck. Yeah, so kind of stuck. You can see. I'm gonna just press that and leave that there. Let it cool for a second. Okay, let's see. What other fabrics do I want to pull in here? Maybe a little bit of this cute stuff. I like this one. What size will the finished block of the month be? Let's see if I can remember off the top of my head. Uh, the finished size is, we put a border on it. And the border is, with the border, it's I think it's like 80. 63 by 72 mm -hmm. with the border. No, with the border, it's like 83 oh, this by. This is with border. Oh, it does, let mm -hmm. me see. Let's see. 63 inches by 72. With that the sounds border. about right, because that's what it was originally before we took those blocks out. Yeah, that's probably close. So it's a it's a large lap size quilt. Come on, little guy, get off of there. Okay, now we're getting down to the point where we just have a few blank spaces. And I want to remember, that, okay, this right here is transition. So let's, let's take care of that right now. Do you want another question? Sure. I don't know how to do webinars. Can you explain? Oh, a webinar is super easy. Um, so there's nothing for you to worry about. If you can get online, you just click the link and follow the prompts. Um, so a webinar is, is easy. It's um, on Zoom which means then you can see me and I can see you and we can talk to each other on the, on the webinar. So it's a really great interaction uh, way to interact and see everybody. So it, it's really fun. I, I think the webinars are, they're working out really well. We've gotten good reviews, lots of good feedback about the webinars. So that's why we're doing them. Keep doing them. Does that answer the question about the webinar, Amelia? Do you think? I think. Will your fabric, that will the block of month fabric be available to purchase separately as yardage? Yes, it will. The fabric will be available to purchase. What if I don't have Zoom? Um, you don't, I don't think you need to have Zoom. I think it's just me, it's just a link. Yeah. Um, so you could, it, Zoom. It's just a can, website. It's just a website. You can just, if you purchase the webinar, you don't need to have Zoom and you don't need to have you don't need to know how to use it. But what I'll do is I send you a link through email after you purchase it. Um, and then on the day and time of the webinar, 
you just hop online and click on that link and it will bring you to the to the webinar. To and the you meeting. just sit and watch. You just sit and watch and you can listen. Um, you can ask questions and participate, but you just sit and learn. It's a really great way to learn a new skill. And we give away a $50 gift card each. Oh, webinar. yeah. Yeah, it's worth coming because you get a $50 gift card. Or no, you, we do a drawing for a $50 gift card. And then for the next 30 days you have access to the recording. So I record the webinar, then you can look at it afterwards and absorb everything that I taught you. Where do you sign up for the webinar? So you can sign up for the webinar on my website, collagequilter.com. It's in the you just, it's, menu bar. Yeah, it's just at the top of the... Just look for, I think it's live webinar, right? Isn't that we, what we've called it, Amelia? Yeah, there's just a webinars button yep at the top at the top of collagequilter.com okay we are getting close here guys and it is looking like a real juicy delicious heart isn't it just the way I want it. Let's see. I'm gonna do kind of a I'll do a little bit of this down here. The only pieces that I really kind of round up and am a little careful with are the are the pieces uh, that are the highlights on top. Uh, let's see, let's fill that in. So we're almost done. And then I want to talk about how I, how I finish this and what my thoughts are about finishing something like this. Uh, where are my tweezers? Let's lift that up. Okay, got a little bit more to finish right here. Just a few more pieces to fill in. Amelia, are there any other questions? In Norwegian, <gasps> Ooh. let me try to translate this. <laughs> Do you always put the highlights on top? Uh, do I always put the highlights on top? Generally, yes. I put, I tend to put the shadows or anything that's dark on the bottom and then the highlights on top. Okay, so that's a highlight. Let's just finish this here. Cute little Murph, she fell asleep on my computer. Because <laughs> it's warm. Is the big iron on? Will you go turn that on? Uh, let's see here. One more little piece right there. Now I'm kind of curious, Amelia, will you maybe help me count? 
how many pieces I've used, how many different fabrics I've used in this. Yes, I have one more question before I do okay. that though. Why didn't you like the piece on the lower left that you mentioned you would probably change? This one? I think and then it, that's what I'm gonna talk to you about. Okay. So let me just finish up here with my highlight. Let's get to our, let's get to our highlight fabric and then I'll talk to you about that. You want me to count? Yeah, I just think it's kind of, I think it's a really good thing to kind of understand how many fabrics I use. So here's one, here's one. Let's see, we want a little bit more down there and then I think we're done. So I didn't use that one and I, oops, sorry. I didn't use that one. I don't think I used this one either. I should have, that's a really good one. Maybe I will, maybe we'll pull one of these out just to add some variety. I love these K-Facet fabrics that have little pops of color. And so you'll always find these in my fabric bundles because they are, they're what I call just essential. They just add great, a great amount of depth and interest. Okay, I'm at like 18 or 19 right now. Okay. So we've got 18 or 19 pieces of fabric in here. Um, that's something to think about, to keep in mind, to aim for as many as you can. On this little On this area. little teeny area because this is what makes it look interesting. Okay, so I think I'm just about finished with this. Uh, <clears throat> nothing has been pressed to each other. So anything that I have a, an issue with, I can still change. And the one thing I wanted to talk to you about was this piece right here. So this is just an example. Um, you can see that this piece here is darker than this piece here. And this border area is darker still. So it's supposed to be darker and then lighter. Um, originally, when I laid this down, I was like, oh, that might, I might want to change that and do a little bit more of a transition color or, you know, transition that is closer. But I left it there because a lot of times the lesson that I've learned is I don't really want to overthink things as I'm working. And now that I've gotten this finished, it doesn't bother me so much. In fact, there's nothing in here that really, there's nothing in here that really bothers me except maybe the shape of this one. And I also think um, the colors come off much darker on the screen they than do. they do in real life. Yeah, they do. They, they look off. really harsh on the screen. Yeah, they do. Um, so, but anyway, I think this accomplishes what I wanted to do. It's a very luscious, rich heart. This is a super simple design to kind of practice um, values and value transitions. And so if I'm happy with it, now I can press everything down. If there's anything I'm not happy with, I can still use my tweezers and, and pull it out, but I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm going to just tack these down and now I'm actually going to send Amelia over and she will press this on the on the big iron just because it's easier and quicker so she'll just take the big iron and press all of these pieces together so there you go now I'm going to have the camera face me can you see me there we go it's a little crooked let me straighten that up okay there, I think, I think that works. So um, anyway, now, so we're done. Just like what time, how long did that take? Not very long to get that little collage done. And I wanna show it to you now. Look how pretty that is from a little bit of a distance. Um, now this is ready to apply to a background fabric. So now that everything has been applied, all of these pieces are sticking together and we've, we've pressed them with a dry iron so that now I can peel it away from 
the parchment paper and it comes off like a sticker. Okay, and now I can um, I can put it on a different piece of fabric, and we can audition different fabrics. In fact, if you if you want to do that, and I just grab a few pieces of fabric that we think it might work on. Um, one thing I want to show you that you can probably see from the back side, there are some holes. Do you see those holes on there? Um, sometimes I've kind of learned that I don't need to have everything. As long as all the pieces will stick together, I don't need to worry about those little holes. Can you press that? Uh, no, I'll, I'll just demonstrate here. So here's a piece of fabric that Amelia grabbed and I can now audition different fabrics and any of those holes, <coughs> the background fabric will show through, sorry. the background fabric will show through and it becomes even more part of the, the fabric so that it just melds all really well together. So anyway, happy Valentine's Day. I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial, this demonstration, and I hope that you have a wonderful week and enjoy your Valentine's Day. Thank you so much for joining me. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't already so that you can see more of my tutorials and learn from me as I do textile collage. Okay. Have a wonderful day. Thanks again. Goodbye.